In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to play Sun Wukong like a pro. I'm going to give you guys a couple tips and I'm going to tell you what blessings and divine traits I use to play Sun Wukong, the greatest character in divine knockout. I mean, look at this level 20 skin. There is no other character better than him. So let's get straight into that right now. Now for my divine trait, I'm going to use charge transformations because my whole gameplay with Sun Wukong revolves around his ultimate. I want to have my ultimate up as fast as possible while we're playing around in the game. I need Carl my clone so we can double team our opponents and destroy them. Now with that being said, what charge transformations does is once I activate the 72 transformations, I will immediately be granted 8% ultimate charge. Now, if I successfully hit this transformation on an enemy, I get an additional 8% ultimate charge. Think about that. That's basically 16% ultimate charge once I do it successfully, which allows Carl to come on the field so we can beat up anybody that comes in our way. Now, for my first minor trait, the minor trait I'm going to choose is Monkey See Monkey Do. Isn't that a funny name? I think it is. But the reason I'm doing this is because I want my clone to be able to use Magic Cudgel and Dashing Strike. Now, there are two main reasons I love this personally. Only one, obviously, it allows my clone to do a lot of damage, also gives them a better opportunity to knock out my enemies. Now the second reason is very simple, being able to use abilities allows my enemies to have a harder time to determine which one of us is the real monkey. Now for the next minor trait is going to be spin to win because who doesn't love to spin like a Beyblade and destroy enemies. Now the reason I'm choosing spin to win is because the final spin attack of dashing strikes deals an additional 4 damage and each hit reduces your dashing strikes cooldown by 1 second. Now dashing strike is a very important ability for Sun Wukong and it can help you eliminate somebody out of the map very easily if they're high on vulnerability or it gives you the opportunity to play around and just knock them back to buy yourself some distance. So having the ability to let this come up a lot sooner with a shorter cooldown is very useful for you when you are in combat, giving you a lot of different maneuverability options when you are on a map playing against almost any different player. Now this next minor trait is very important. When my clone is active, since I want it to be active more often, it's going to be strength in numbers, mainly because it allows me and my clone to have a 25% knockback resistance while he's active. So once Carl and me are active, we're already unstoppable with damage and we don't get knocked back easily, which is very handy. Okay, now we're going to get into our greater blessings and our lesser blessings. This is going to be a pretty interesting one. I'm also going to give you options that you can switch these out with. Now starting off with our greater blessings, me personally, I use Precise Momentum, Sun Wukong's greater blessing. Why? Because it gains me 25% movement speed for 15 seconds when dealing a critical strike. And honestly, when I use my Magic Kurgil most of the time to kite around, it does crit allowing me to get that extra speed when necessary or just to kite away when I get that speed. You know what I mean? Plus a lot of my attacks also crit. However, there are other options in my opinion you can use. And one of the other options is if you really want to follow my build and go with an extra bonus thing to get ultimate charge faster, you can use Arthur's Insight, which also grants you a 6% ultimate charge when you dodge a hit. Or if you want to be super optimal, you can use Saul's Greater Blessing, which is Saul's Temper. Deal an additional 25% damage to the last enemy that knocked you out of the round, or deal an additional 12.5% damage if you have not been knocked out of the round yet. Now, personally, I do think this is really important greater blessing to have on any character in the game. The only reason I don't have it is because I have not unlocked it, and I don't think it's going to fit for me right now in my 1v1 playstyle. Now for this, you can use it. It's not the best, but I can see it being very useful. It'll allow you to reset your third ability. For our case, it's going to be our dashing spins. It's Amaterasu's Luminescence. Activating your ultimate resets your cooldown of your third ability, which can be very useful. So you can go and use your third ability, pop your alt, and then get it reset to continue it and knock somebody out faster. This is an interesting way to think about it, but it's not something that's necessary. The first three greater blessings are the ones I would personally choose out of the set. Now next up we're going to go with our lesser blessings. Now this is a must have, there is no replacement for this. You have to have Saul's preheated. Preheated is the best. If you saw my video where I obtained it, it was perfect. It was the one I've been farming out for so long and it was needed for Sun Wukong. Made me feel so powerful. Starts my rounds with 15% ultimate charge. I mean, what's better for this build that I'm building around, which basically allows my clone to do everything and me and him to double team all opponents. Okay, now for the next lesser blessing, this one in my personal opinion is one that really sits too well to your personal playstyle. For me, I like hefty swings. The final hits on light attack chains deals an additional 20% knockback. I like it for me and how I play. Now, I will say you can change this up in nearly almost any other lesser blessing and it could work to your playstyle, even the Athena one or let's say the Hercules one. Each one fits in perfectly with what you personally want to do. I just like this one out of the rest. Now with that being said, we've covered all the blessings, the traits, everything you need to copy my specific build. Now, I will obviously update this video every so often if I do change around due to patches or whatever is going on, okay guys? Now I'm going to give you guys some tips on how I play Sun Wukong to become one of the best Sun Wukongs in the game. Now my number one main tip when you're playing Sun Wukong is be very patient. Don't just go on and use your abilities. It's very, very, very important. 
as each one of your abilities allow you the opportunity to do so much decisive damage. Now yes, this can be said very well for all other characters, but I don't think that's the case. When it comes to Sun Wukong, one of the things you need to know is you can play super aggressive. You have no reason to stay back and be very patient. I personally don't play super patient. I do a medium. I kind of feel out how my opponent is going to do before we engage each other. And what I look to do is set myself up to be able to use each ability properly. So if I'm going to use, for example, my mobility where I can turn into a tiger or a bird, my whole gameplay revolves around either baiting a dodge with my tiger form or using my bird to maneuver around properly so I can get that perfect stun or peck on them. Now, be very aware of this. The tiger form is not easy to control and you can easily miss this or run yourself off the map. So ideally, the bird form is what you want to do if you want to know you can actually secure something. Also note that when you are using your mobility, you can easily dodge through or be immune to somebody's ability and stun them with it perfectly, getting yourself a nice auto attack range and then ending it with a nice air heavy. Now when it comes to your dashing strike, understand that you need to be very careful of the range. So if you go in immediately calculating that range properly, you will hit and get the full three counter on them without really any worries because you can't really dodge through it. However, note this, this is very important. You can use this in other ways. For example, even if I know somebody's coming in to me and I know I may miss this dashing strikes, I will still use it. Half the time people don't actually understand that you can not actually interrupt it on its second little turn, but what you can do is still land it or maneuver it like a Beyblade. So you go in one direction, literally kite yourself away to gain distance. So for example, if Sosuno is chasing you down with his chain attacks, you can use your dashing strikes get yourself some distance away from him and reverse back right at the right time for the last rotation of it, which will knock Sosuno back and negating all his damage to you while you get just a little bit of damage on him to counter perfectly. Now, another tip which I use to play Sun Wukong is very simple. When I have my clone Carl out, what I like to do is most of the time is let Carl engage as much as possible. So I let my clone go in first, do some damage. If my clone messes up, then I take full advantage of that and use that opportunity to literally do as much damage as I can to the enemy as they won't be able to really dodge out or maneuver away from me, which is actually pretty important. Now, another thing to note, if you go in first and mess up, sometimes your clone does help you at the perfect moment. Sometimes your clone is unable to get to you because remember, they can't really use your mobility to get in faster, so they can just use your Kurgil or their spinning dash. And half the time, it doesn't always work, but they do use the Kurgil very well. It's just something to keep in mind. That's how I play, especially when I'm high in vulnerability. I let my clone do a lot of the work and then I'll come in and do some damage. Another way you can use your clone is you guys can literally double team side by side, but it's very risky. I have done this a couple times with Sun Wukong. I just don't recommend it. I personally recommend the idea of one person going in and you stay a little bit of a distance away and basically countering for your clone. Now, another thing to understand with Sun Wukong, you might be saying to yourself, why didn't I take the trait that allows me to switch with my clone every three seconds? I personally don't believe it's very useful for my gameplay as I try my best to only switch once if necessary, or most of the times I don't even get the opportunity to switch because there is no reason for it how I play Sun Wukong. I win a lot of my matches with him because I enjoy him so much, but at the same time, sometimes it is very necessary when you need to switch and be very aware of your clone's placement on the map. If you are not aware of where he is on the map or who he's facing at the moment, it can cost you the game if you switch incorrectly. So know at certain times, you need to be very aware again of what's going on on the map before you switch with your clone. And this basically covers all my guide and tips that I have for Sun Wukong, all the divine traits and blessings I use when I'm playing him, plus as well the little tips here and there I do whenever I go into a 1v1 or a 2v2. With that being said, if you want more information, all you have to do is check out any of my gameplay with the awesome character that is Sun Wukong, and I guarantee you my commentary is going to help you break down of what to do in certain circumstances when you're fighting characters in the game. Now understand that there are a lot of other builds for Sun Wukong, so understand that this isn't the only one. Now the same goes for a lot of other characters out there in Divine Knockout or any other game. Personally, I think Divine Knockout allows you the opportunity to customize your character to fit you and your specific playstyle. Obviously, there's going to be an optimal playstyle, but I don't think it's going to be so optimal where that is the only thing you can do. You can switch it around to fit you perfectly to literally eliminate any opponent that faces you any day. Now, with that being said, that's it for this video. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you run for Sun Wukong or what character you'd like me to do next. I do have to master a couple others. There are only a couple characters that I have mastered enough where I can do a guide on them. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!